I'm Jessica. However, everyone does call me Silver around the World Wide Web. It is Wednesday, September 6th. I just wanted to say a quick hiya to all new viewers. Thank you for coming by and giving me a shot. A great welcome back to all returning viewers. I really do appreciate you coming back. Thank you for your patience with the lateness of last time's episode um, and the dual nature of the episode as well. I honestly had a bit of an issue with the slideshow I had wanted to end the show with, so I actually re-edited the show to not include it so that everyone who wanted to watch just the show could do so. So if you are a subscriber of the podcast on YouTube, which you totally should be, you may have gotten a few notations from me about last week. Sorry about that. All right, there's been a lot that I've been up to over the past couple weeks, so let's get started. So grab your knitting, your drink of choice, and let's get started. Ooh, don't mind if I do, right? <laughs> mm. Sorry about that. Today, I am actually drinking some pumpkin spice coffee from San Marcos Coffee in what I am terming now my happy, my happy mug. See my Instagram post I just put up. <laughs> So, the more you know, as you have probably noticed, I've been trying a few new things over the past couple weeks. I've decided that I am going to try to be a bit more tech savvy and show off some of my gear side, especially when it comes to editing the podcast. Um, the slideshow itself was an attempt. I do a lot of those in my personal, you know, trying to keep a track of all the photos, etc. But I wanted to try it out on the podcast. So yeah, yay for being guinea pigs, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I have also decided to purloin a few things from some of my favorite podcasts. I've added an epic Star Wars type scroller to certain se sub sections, sorry. And I've decided to do a shout out to anyone that introduces themselves in the Introduce Yourself thread on our Ravelry group. I know some people would prefer to lurk in the boards and not draw attention to themselves, so I've actually decided to open this decision to all of you. I have put a poll in this week's show notes if you you know, and if you would prefer that I wouldn't do the shout outs, just please let me know there. Um, if you don't mind voting, that would be great. Um, I'm kind of leaving this up to y'all. <laughs> um, but I'm leaving this up until the next time I record, so you know. So, yeah, <laughs> in the meantime, there was actually someone who introduced themselves since I recorded last time. A large hiya to R -ru -ru CMC. I think is how you pronounce it, R-O-O-C-M-C. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Now, before I get into the rest of the show, I want to express my awe at the storm that hit Texas, um, my thoughts are actually with those affected by it. I'm actually proud of the knitting, <clears throat> sorry, of the knitting community and how supportive they have been and, you know, how they've offered to help so many displaced knitters replacing their stashes and et cetera, even sending money. Um, I'm also proud of the speedrunning community who managed to put together a marathon um, between August 31st and the 3rd. They actually helped raise money for the Houston Food Bank, uh, actually to the tune of 227,876 and 53 cents. Well, as of yesterday, anyway. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be showing off the the links to both their their thread for the marathon and the and the uh, Houston Food Bank website as well. Um, but they are still taking donations until September 8th. So if you listen to this before that, you do still have a little bit of time to donate if you wish to. Um, like I said, I'll be mentioning both of those in the show notes as well. That way you can go right to it. 
I am very proud to be a part of both of these wonderful communities who have decided to to help out as much as they possibly can. Alrighty, so since it is the first podcast of the month, you know what that means. Yes, I go through all of the knit alongs I'm hosting and participating in, like usual. Uh, here is the timestamp of where the KAL section ends. You can jump right to the rest of the show if you're not interested in participating in the KALs. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, so let us get started. Let us. I love that. Let us get started. I should really enunciate my words. Got to put the right <laughs> emphasis on the right syllable, right? <laughs> Any who's a Let's move on to Whip Down 2017. As you already know, uh, this started August 1st and goes until the end of the year. Most likely I will actually th- th- uh, lock the thread until the following morning when I wake up. I, you know, you know how you do. <laughs> anyway, um, for the details on this one, you must be a member of the Silver's Dreamland podcast group here on Ravelry. You must post uh, FO pictures on the FO thread, one post, one project per post, if you don't mind. Um, there were a couple of people who doubled up, so just you know, keep an eye on your um, on your inbox. I did message you guys directly, so. Just remember, hats, washcloths, and smaller items may be counted. However, just remember, uh, four gives you one entry, um, and by that I mean washcloths will equal one, um, small preemie hats, etc. Um, poly dipping is allowed. Any project that is finished after the beginning of August will count, and any Ravelry count will count. Every Ravelry craft will count as well. Try saying that ten times fast, right? Oh yeah, and um, here's a new rule that I actually kind of just made up. So, not really just made up, but since the last time we spoke, um, your single socks do count. Um, You'll get one post for the first, and then if you happen to finish the second sock of the pair, you can definitely um, add it on to that same post to be able to count. That won't work. So, if you have two of the same sock, you will get double the entries. Sorry. It's just, yeah, (laughs) not fair to everyone else. Um, so just use a uh, hashtag SDL whip W I P down 2017 on all social media. So I know you're playing along and I'll, I'll put it down below too. So if you happen to miss it, <laughs> um, the, there are several prizes so far. I do have a copy of Chris level Chris loves wool's slip and swirl socks donated by herself. Wow. <laughs> donated by by the designer herself um i will post the link down below as well as this wonderful photo there also will be a wonderful bag that was donated by silver shed usa i love this bag y'all i wish i was keeping it for myself but i can't be i can't be i can't be rude and not give it out right (laughs) <laughs> um, I, there's also a teacup bag by the wonderful Molly Klein Designs. Oh, I love this bag too, y'all. I just, I couldn't resist that one for you. And so the rest of the uh, prizes will be announced as soon as they come in. If you would like to donate a prize, please PM me or email me directly at silversdreamlandpodcast at gmail.com. So yes. There are a few FOs from the past couple weeks, yo. Since the last time I recorded, we had a few people enter their finished objects in the thread. So here they are Rue CMC, Knit and Furrow Girl, and Moj Crochet. So congratulations, ladies, on your finished objects. They all look so super awesome. Honestly, I think a few of the patterns may have just jumped into my queue when I was looking at them. (laughs) So yes, and since it's not a chatter thread, if you do see that your project has a little heart on it, it means I love your project and that I have seen it and are counting it. So yay. (laughs) All right, let's move on to Java Along. 
details of this one. This is a year long along that I am hosting in to honor the wonderful genius that is Java Pearl Designs. If you do knit one of CC or Danny's designs, please feel free to include it in the FO thread. You can enter anything that reminds you of either one of them. Even if your project name is a reference to something they've said on their podcast, Geeky Girls Knit Podcast, it will count. Essentially, any project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that has anything to do or is inspired by the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast, Java Pearl, or Java Pearl Design, sorry, or Dam Damies Doodles or Java Pearl. It could be any of their patterns or anything like that. Essentially, it will not be hard to convince me. Trust me. Uh, whips are allowed as long as they've actually been finished in 2017. So if you've been lucky enough to be one of her test knitters, you know who you are. <laughs> they will definitely count as well. Um, please feel free to poly dip in any other alongs as long as it fits with the other alongs rules as well. Any project that you finish and post counts as one entry into the giveaway. You must be a member of the Silver's Dreamland podcast group on Ravelry to participate. Please post any pictures on social medians using the hashtag SDL Java along so that I can find your whips and FOs. Who knows, you may actually be entered into a drawing for one of my random act of patterning days, which one should be coming up soonish. I won't tell you when, so keep an eye out. And as usual, I am actually at Silver's Treats um, to be able to count. So, you know, you can always. Yeah, you can always count back. look for me directly. Anyway, um, for the promise for the prizes, yes, what you came by for the prizes. As promised, I will be giving away a digital copy of CC's Coffee with CC book. Since I still have not gotten any responses for my prompts, I've decided to wait until I finish all the patterns in this book. So please make sure you post soon to win, and I'll be sending a link. I'll show you a link directly to the post that I'm referring to here. <laughs> I will also be giving away a physical copy of CC's new book, Coffee with CC and Dami 2. At the end, I would say at the end of the year at this point, um, <laughs> the winners will be pulled from the FO thread only. So again, please make sure to get your FOs in this thread. We do have two more wonderful prizes donated by Nimrus on Ravelry. Now, if you don't know who she is, oh boy, are you missing out. She is the genius behind Pandia's Jewels. She has generously donated a skein of her hand-dyed yarn on her snug face. It is the Highlands colorway. I'll, she also donated a set of Harley Quinn stitch markers for me to give away during the course of the drama along. You never know. It'll be awesome. I love these things, guys. Oh, that reminds me, I probably should order some for myself, right? <laughs> Such a geek. Anyway, I also have a coffee themed bag by Molly Klein Designs. So if you have any crafty items that you would like to donate as prizes, please PM me on Ravelry, which and I am SilverLuna2112, or email me directly at silversdreamlandpodcast at gmail.com. All right. You ready for this one? So we had a total of 11 entries by one awesome viewer the, over the past few weeks. So random number generator had it pretty easy this time around. What do you think? <laughs> so congratulations, Rue CNC. I know you've been a test knitter of CCs, but if there's a pattern of yours that you don't have and want, please PM me on Ravelry and I'll send it right over. And as usual, if I don't hear from you by the time I record next, I will P uh, I will ear burn you directly. As is any along to be honest if you don't if i don't happen to hear from you by the time i record next i'll go ahead and just send you a pm um you have 30 days after from the date from today's date to be able to get in contact with me too so all right next along i'm participating in the zombie friendship kal being hosted by the stock knit zombies um for the details on this one Anything that has been cast on after, was it 
after August 1st? Yes, after August 1st. Um, the items must be 75 grams or 150 yards of yarn. You would have to post a picture of the finished objects in their FO thread with a link or what we like to call an ear burn to your knitting friends and how they are connected to the project before or on October 31st to be entered. Now, what am I entering? Well, I'm actually entering my MZ4MZ socks, which I'll put a picture here. I actually haven't done much since the last time you saw it. Um, sorry about that. I maybe did a pattern rotation, which doesn't really show off much on the in a picture, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> let me take a quick drink. Go. Woohoo! This coffee. Mm. All right. The next one I am participating is in is called the 13 month 13 months of magic ale that is being hosted by Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick Podcast. Um, to to for ease of access, I'm just going to read off her her rules and regulations because there are a few. And she explains it so much better than I do. All right, so this KAL runs from January first to two thousand uh, January first, two thousand seventeen, through January thirty first, two thousand eighteen, which is thirteen full months if you haven't been paying attention. Um, she has called this a KAL for simplicity's sake, but please note that all Ravelry approved crafts are welcome. That does include knitting, crochet, weaving, and spinning. You must craft. 13 complete objects in this KAL in order to be eligible for prize consideration. There, these 13 objects can be any type of object or, or any combination of objects that you choose. You will have one post on the FO thread for all 13 of your objects. Simply update the post with each new FO as we go throughout the year. And she does include a wonderful example so you can see, um, and like she mentioned, one post for 13 objects. If you do happen to finish 13 objects and have the time and would like to do another 13, you are more than welcome to start a new post and do a second set of 13 objects for the KAL. If you do complete two sets, you'll be entered in the drawing twice, etc. if you get more done. Um, no whips are allowed for this one. Only projects casted on during the KAL time frame are eligible for prize consideration, so you know. In order for your project to be eligible for prize consideration, it must have something to do with magic, witches, etc. Anything Harry Potter is eligible, but you are not limited to, limited to Harry Potter. Any fandom or items that contain or relate to magic, witches, etc. works. Your project can be an item in, directly inspired from your chosen magical fandom, or it can be a pattern or yarn that is directly magic in some way. Or if it has something to do with the word, word magic, you know, things like that. If it is not immediately apparent how your project is tied to magic, please include a brief explanation in your FO post, which I tend to do anyway, so it works out, right? <laughs> um, poly dipping is okay. Please feel free to poly dip in KALs from other podcasts or RAV groups or any other KALs going on within the group. There is a chatter thread, so please feel free to post project plans, look for project ideas, share yarn choices, um, and talk about your favorite magical fandoms, etc. Um, there is a wonderful pattern bundle that was created by one of Jilly's viewers, the VFB. So if you're looking for ideas, you can find that there in the group. Um, you must be a member of the Knitting Broomstick podcast group there on Ravelry to be eligible to win prizes. Prize winners will have a total of 30 days to claim their prize, or if it is forfeit, aka she'll make sure it goes to somebody else. Um, as to submitting small items, she has had many questions on whether or not smaller items are acceptable submissions for the KAL. Um, the shorter answer is uh, yes. <laughs> uh, she... Sorry. Yes, um, bookmarks, hexapuffs, blankets, squares, dish towels, etc., are absolutely fine to submit as your one or many of your 13 FOs. If you end up needing to submit more than one set of 13 FOs, you may do so in a new post. She does reserve the right to change this if it becomes at all problematic in the future, but she doesn't foresee that, so yes. Um, she also wanted to note that everyone should just have fun with the KAL. And just note, and she notes that 
you know, everyone does have real life obligations that can definitely limit their crafting time. So yeah, that's why she doesn't mind smaller projects. And I don't either, to be honest. <laughs> um, as to what I'm entering for this one, uh, short answer is I do not know. Um, there are a few things that I've worked on throughout the course of the year that I know are going to be able to enter in it directly and a few that are coming up. And I'll explain more about that later. Anyway, but I'll I'll, um, I'll definitely let you know for sure when I know, right? <laughs> Gosh, I should really get on that, right? <laughs> uh, all right. Quick drink, guys. Oh. <laughs> all right, if you went away and you didn't want to hear about the, the KALs, come on back, come on back, come on back. Moving on to my favorite things. I'm going to mention one this week because um, it's kind of big. So on the 26th, MTI's brother actually got married to a very cool lady. We actually had such a good time at this wedding. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I was posting a little bit. Um, I actually had my hair dyed and cut for the occasion too. So nothing like going from purple and pink hair to an all, almost auburn color overnight, right? So I'm going to tell you, I honestly don't do the whole girly girl thing often, so I had to get all new makeup and a nice dress for this wedding. See? <laughs> I also had put up a few pictures of things that happened at the table that MDI and I and several of his family members were at. <laughs> um, the bride and groom had a signature drink that was pretty good. I admit I had a few over the course of the night and by a few, a few. Um, the first one did taste blue and then after that it was just like, yep, they're good. <laughs> um, there was also an ice cream truck by the name of Tipsy Cones. I'll um, put the link to their website directly in the show notes as well. They had some awesome alcoholic ice creams, so I took full advantage. I have to tell you, I really liked their mudside cone. Oh, oh my gosh. I didn't have any pictures because, quite frankly, at that point, I was a little gone. And <laughs> I was purposefully leaving my phone at the table. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So if you have been listening to past episodes, you're like, oh, well, what about the shawl that you were making for the bride? Uh, yes, uh, Toast didn't get a chance to finish it. Totally didn't. Um, but don't worry, I did message her the night before to kind of give her the heads up that I wasn't quite done with it yet, and she totally understands. See, I told you she was very cool. But don't worry, I'll, I'll make sure she gets it for the holidays, though. Um, after all, I did promise her something hand handmade, and she seemed to be enjoying herself either way. So, we're good with that. Alrighty. <laughs> mm. Guys, this is my first cup of coffee. I don't know what the heck is going on with me today. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that I've got my coffee fixed, <laughs> um, let is, let's move on to FOs. I have more than one this week. The first one I called Vanilla Rouge. This one is, well, wow. Well, these ones were a pair of CC's Vanilla Cappuccino socks by CC Almond in the Arnie and Carlos gnome color. Just a nice vanilla pattern. I love it. <laughs> I did do this on a size US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter 9 inch circular needles. Guys, I love this color. I love the combination of colors and how they came out. Cannot wait to start wearing them. Um, so the second thing that I finished, I called Down the Blue Stairs. Now, this is something that I hadn't even started the last time we spoke. Um, I pretty much finished this within, oh, five days, if that. Um, but I did finish it up pretty much right at the strike of, stroke of midnight when I happened to actually be watching the Stockinet Zombies. So it was pretty meta. Um, I... I'll show you that picture here. I promise I will get a better photo and a closer photo before I get this one, so don't worry about that. 
Um, the pattern I used was the Upstairs Downstairs A Cowl in Three Sizes pattern by Paula Emmons Fizzell. I love this pattern. You know, I think I've done this now a total of seven times. Um, <laughs> this time I did use Indigo Bunting by Miss Babs, which is a Yowza skein. Oh, and I still have over a hundred something yards. I can't remember the exact number, but I have a lot left over. Um, I used a size US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter, and that's a Sorry, it's a 29 inch Susan Bates metal circs that I have. Oh, I love these needles. I think I'm going to use them for every one of the cowls from now on. <laughs> it makes it go super fast. So what I'm currently working on, um, I have a few. I'm not going to lie. i um, still got quite a bit that I'm still working on for the whip down. However, I got a couple more that I casted on this week. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, the first one is called Vanilla Beans. The pattern is CC's Vanilla Cappuccino Socks by CC Almond. I am using a Gnome Acres Fancy Gnome colorway Birdie Bots because that's the colorway I really wanted to do. And quite frankly, MTI kind of helped me pick my next vanilla sock colorway. Hi, MTI. Thank you. Love this colorway. Um, I'm doing it. I'm doing doing knitting with a size US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter nine inch circular needles, and it's actually being hosted in my Jack Skellington Nightmare Before Christmas bag. The one of my new ones. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and the second thing that jumped on my needles, I am calling the Blue Swirl of Happiness. This one is the pattern Swirl Hat by Maddie Harrington. Very awesome pattern. Obviously, I think this is the fourth time doing it, at least, if you don't include the, the baby hats. If you include the baby hats as one, I guess, right? Um, using a West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 ply colorway called Blue Lagoon. I love the way the stripey sequence is coming up. It's meant to be a stripe, self-striping sock yarn. And then the hat, you get at least two rows per color, which is awesome, which is awesome, yo. I cannot wait to get, get, get back to that. I'm using a size US2, which is a 2.75 millimeter, um, 16 inch circular needles, because as you do <laughs> with hats, you don't want them to be too big, right? Um, this one is being housed in my Madman and a box bag. Oh, I love this bag, yo. I probably should show you a picture of it if I can find it. Eh, whatever. Anyway, there were a couple of other things that I started relatively recently, but I've been getting a lot of time, um, a lot of time working in on it. For example, the first one is the flat orchid wrap. Honestly, I spent a lot of time on this one over the past few weeks. I absolutely love the way that this is coming out. If I could get away with doing a pattern on air, I totally would, and I'd be doing it live. But yeah, pattern and me and knitting and talking at the same time, I guess, just does not work. Anyway, um, the pattern on this one is the Flat White Wrap by CC Almond. The yarn is Miss Babs Caroline Base in the orchid colors. Yeah, sorry, that was my bad in. in interpretation of the song yeah see previous episode anyway um this is being done on a size us 3 3.5 millimeter 40 inch highest highest sharp needles oh love the needles too guys I'm telling you um this is actually being hosted in my coffee cup bag by molly klein designs it's actually getting um long enough at this point i think at 20 yeah, 26, 26 pattern rotations. It's long enough that I might need to upgrade it to a larger bag. We'll see, yo. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that has gotten a little bit of love this week is what I am calling Green with NB. Yes, uh, I, won't be able, I won't tell you who they're for, they're for, but they're a large pair of socks, yo. That's why it's taken me so long. Anyway, um, the pattern is called We Need a Geek to Break the Code Socks by CC Almond. I'm using another Gnome Acres color in their House Gnome 
which is called Leprechaun Knickers. I think, honestly, that's why my recipient really liked that color was the name. I am not going to lie. He's got the same kind of humor I do. <laughs> anyway, um, the, I am knitting these on a size US 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter um, t a 2 16 inch circular method as well. Um, this one is being hosted in my holiday cats bag by Molly Klein Designs. Okay, before I take it, I've got to take another sip, guys. Ooh. Hmm. The next thing that I've been working on, it's gotten a little bit of love. I am calling coffee, coffee, coffee. Uh, this is the Coffee Date Shawl by CC Almond. I am using three colors of the Dreaming Color Smushy. And using Medieval, Cinnamon Girl, and Melon Bomb. Oh, love the way these colors are coming out, guys. Especially the further and further I go into the shawl. I wasn't um, sold right away. And then once all the colors are starting to come in now, oh, I'm loving it even more as I keep going, yo. All right, this is being done on a size US4 and on a 3.5 millimeter needle um, on a 29 inch metal Susan Bates needles. You guys, I am a relatively tight knitter, so I do need to go up a size from what she does. And honestly, it looks so much better now than with the size three I was using on it before. Whoops, the doodles. Anyway, um, that is actually <laughs> being hosted in the Beauty and the Beast stained glass bag. Oh, love it. Love it. That combination, yo, it, it's perfect. Um, so the next thing that I am have been working on is what I'm calling This is Halloween. Uh, yes, this is the Jack-O-Lantern self self-patterning socks by Abigail Grasso. Um, who is also the dyer of the yarn, also of the same name, Jack-O-Lantern. She goes by Artistic Yarn by Abby. They're on Etsy. Oh, absolutely amazing. I've also got a gingerbread house one that I am dying to cast on. So hopefully you'll see those in the near future, right? <laughs> um, I am knitting these pair on a size 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter and 9 inch circulars. And this is also being hosted in my Jack Skellington um, bag by Molly Klein Designs. Because if you're going to have vanilla sock needles and you don't need to worry about pattern, you can put them all in one bag. Because <laughs> you know how I am. I do. I honestly, I get bored really quickly. So if I have two vanilla socks of two different colors in the same bag, I swear I get more done that way. <laughs> Anyway, um, the last thing that I have been putting a little bit of love on, even as we speak, I've done at least six rows already so far since I started recording, is called the Teal Baby Blanket. Um, I basically am trying to use up some of my acrylic stash um, over the next couple years. I do want to just have the good stuff, as people have said. I'm not really a yarn snob per se, but I have noticed that my hands hurt less with the um, straight up wool that I use for everything else. So, you know, trying to get the acrylic that hurts my hands out of the stash is a better plan. Anyway, enough belly aching about that. Um, the pattern I'm using on this blanket I'm call is actually the Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth by Root Slate. I will be going until I have about half of the skein left. Um, I am using the uh, Red Heart Colorway um, Comfort Sport in their turquoise colorway yes so it is roughly about a thousand yards i have so it'll be in it it'll be a good size blanket i think by the time i finish um the needles i'm using are a size us6 which is a 4.0 millimeter cubic platina they are the 40 inch metal circulars. I absolutely love these needles. I don't know why, but I really love these needles they're nice and square they fit my hands oh I have so many different types of needles and mostly metal needles, but I found that the ones that are like are square, the bigger that they go, I am a lot happier. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is currently actually freestyling it only because the skein of yarn is still so big and I am just pulling it from the center because I, you know how they, I don't know if you've ever seen a red heart skein, but they usually have a pull from the middle. Um, style and it's just so much easier to knit from it until 
quite frankly, until it collapses, <laughs> and then I'll wind it up later. But consider me lazy. Didn't want to do it before I recorded today. <laughs> All right. I am probably going to be spending some time in the frog pond over the next couple of weeks. Um, I won't give really a lot of specifics, but there is one that has been kind of nagging at the back of my mind because, you know, when you're really not supposed to be casting on any new things, you just can't help but dreaming of your next cast on. Um, I'm so, and in the middle of all that, I have been thinking of ripping out the Morticia's Batwings shawl that I've, I have on my Ravelry page and actually just using that yarn for the Flax sweater by Tin Ken Knits. Um, I'm honestly really not feeling the whole shawl thing right now because I noticed I don't really wear a lot of the shawls that I've been working on, even though I have quite a few, even still on the needles. Um, I think I still want to do this, the, the, the flax, even if the grossy girls don't end up doing a tin can knits along, which I really hope they do. Um, I'm still thinking about doing the flax on my own. Um, and if you want to join in, please let me know. We can do an impromptu KAL of our own because <laughs> it's an awesome, easy sweater. It is a top down. You need um, the, they recommend sixes and eights in like 16 inch and 32 inch cords, which I don't actually have those sizes. As many needles as I have in MDI, I promise I don't have those needles. <laughs> yeah, if you're actually listening, I don't know if you've actually listened to the past couple episodes. Bad, bad boy. Anyway, um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I ordered those. Those should be coming on their way soon. And I think within the within a couple of days after getting those needles, I think I may actually just start it either way. Um, I am looking for a ballpark finishing start or starting the sweater. I think just looking at the date, it is the sixth. So maybe the yeah, let's we'll just let's we'll just say the cast on day of October first. So please let me know. Anyway, oh, I've been talking a lot, haven't I? <laughs> As evidenced by the fact that I need more coffee. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what you're reading and listening to? Well. I finished quite a few books this time around. Um, I was listening to White Hot and Wildfire by Alana Andrews, which is the um, ending of the the saga that started off with Burn For Me, which I really liked and wanted to read, read them through. Um, I also read a series by Annie Gonzalez, um, one that starts off with Here Comes the Witch, Fortune Favors the Witch, and then Some Like It Witchy. Oi, I love it. Um, I only wish there was more, but I think Annie is doing another um, series in the same town, just a different um, a different bunch of couples, I guess. And then there were four other books that I am, quite frankly, not going to mention by name, as I've only given them three stars or less, but they are listed directly on my Goodreads. Oh, 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 speaking of my Goodreads, I have decided that I have, I'm going to up the, my goal, even though I haven't hit the 140 books, I upped it to 160 just to keep myself um, gearing toward a goal. I know that I tend to slow down my reading um, the closer to the holidays we get, because the more holidays there are at the end of the year, the busier I am. Anyway, um. I'm actually currently listening to a couple books. Um, the first is Clean Sweep by Alana Andrews. Uh, I am also listening to uh, one, 1105 Yakima Street by Demi Maycomer. Um, the reason this one is taking so long is I obviously I, I have to be tailored to my laptop to listen to it. It's not one that comes through my Kindle for some reason because WhisperSync is like that. Um, so I do have to remember to come back to it, which I really should get on that. What do you think? <laughs> um, I'm also still reading The Shining by Stephen King. Uh, yes, I have gotten more than a couple chapters read in the past couple weeks, yo. Um, I've, I'm determined to finish reading this before the, the start of October. Um, 
Yeah. I, I mean, I get to a certain... This is actually the second attempt at reading past the halfway point. Um, a lot of it is is that I can't shake myself from the movie. Um, and knowing that they stayed pretty close to his original book and uh, screen, like script, um, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's... I find myself doing an analysis of the book versus the movie, so I don't know. I had to shake myself out of that and get back to it. What do you think? <laughs> anyway, I've also been um, binge listening to Wine and Crime. Um, I am still really very much enjoying these wonderful ladies. I have only four episodes um, left to catch up to them completely. I know they're going to be recording sometime today or yesterday. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get back to listening to them. If you haven't heard them, you totally should. They're a riot. You can actually find them iTunes, so you know. All right, and they do have their own um, blog, which has all of the pictures and things that they were talking about as well. All right. Ooh, so what you watching, Silver? Um, not as much as listening to audio podcasts and things, but I have been watching a bit. Ugh, sorry, I hit the microphone. <laughs> a lot of background noise. Anyway, I have been watching a lot of Smallville, um, pretty much up to season seven, episode 18. <laughs> I'm getting there, yo, I'm getting there. Um, I also recently found Lucifer. Um, I've been watching a couple episodes. I still, I'm not too sure what I think about it, to be honest. But I will let you know when I watch more. Let's see. I also managed to watch five movies this time around. Um, <laughs> which seems like not very many, but I tend to, you know binge watch tv more than movies um anyway i got on a tom willing kick <laughs> um so i wanted to watch cheaper by the dozen one and two um the fog is up next on my queue i promise um i also watched a bit of julia roberts as well um uh, in the t in the way of pretty woman and runaway bride because they're a couple of my favorite movies and i do also have um mystic pizza in my queue to watch this week as well um again because julia roberts is julia roberts but um what actually prompted that is i've actually never watched mystic pizza which is <gasps> gasp i know i'm from connecticut i've you know been by mystic pizza um so i really really should get on that right and the other one another favorite of mine the never ending story i i couldn't resist that one yo <laughs> And so, also in the world of my podcast, I have been keeping up with all of the audio pod or all the video podcasts that, that I watch as well. Um, I have made a list on my blog, so just in case you are looking for some new to you shows. All right, I'm pretty social. You can find me on our Ravelry board, which is Silver's Dreamland podcast. I am Silver Luna twenty one twelve there. On Facebook, Silver's Dreamland can be found at www.facebook.com backslash Silver's Dreamland. On Instagram, I am both Silver's Treats and Silver's Dreamland. Um, I usually tend to read through the one on Silver's Treats first, so you know. On Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. I do tend to read through all messages as soon as I possibly can. If you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please feel free to email me directly at Silver's Dreamland at gmail.com. As always, anything that I talk, anything and everything that I talk about can be found in our show notes directly at www.silversdreamlandpodcast.com. All right, I've rambled for long enough. I know your time is valuable, so please feel free to join in any discussion, or you can even start your own on the Silver's Dreamland po um, re podcast Ravelry board. Wow, I don't bite, I promise. Please stay tuned. For episode 30. As always, anything that I talk anything and everything that I talk about can be found in our show notes directly at www.silversdreamlandpodcast.com. Alright, I've rambled for long enough. I know your time is valuable, so please feel free to join in any discussion, or you can even start your own on the Silver's Dreamland po um, podcast Ravelry Board. Wow, I don't bite, I promise. 
please stay tuned for episode 32 on the 20th. Until next time. Bye, everyone.